What is up everybody? Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create this right here. More specifically, the shadow background gradient that you see here. And I'm gonna show you how to create it in Figma and then also the front end as well. And this tutorial is inspired by this tool right here that actually makes I uh, just choosing one of these and you can copy the CSS makes it really easy. But I did wanna walk you through um, the actual CSS properties one by one. And then also, of course, like I mentioned first, we're gonna design it in Figma. Now, chances are, if you're watching this video, you probably wanna be a better designer. And if that's the case, how much do you really want it? Because at designcourse.com, I've created a UI UX course that will help you go from designing layouts that I might rate a four or five up to eight and beyond. But more important than that, as a better designer, this means that you can land higher paying clients and jobs. This course includes over 16 hours of video, 40 interactive UI design tests, and even mentorship, where I personally take a look at your work that you submit, I review it, and many times I also revise it, providing you with great feedback to help you become a better designer. Now, for this video, I want you to use the coupon code UI2022, and that will give you 22% off at checkout. All right, so I'm here in Figma. Let's create a new design file right here, and then we'll go choose the frame tool, and I think we'll just stick with, uh, yeah, just like a mobile viewport. Hit R for a rectangle, and we're gonna draw out something, yeah, roughly around this size, and then this is gonna be the top layer, so um, we're just gonna make this white, and we'll give it some border radius, maybe like 10, and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this. So we have two, we have a rectangle here and there. We're gonna lock the top one um, so that we don't select it. And then we're just gonna bring this one down just so we can see um, the actual gradient. So what we'll do is give the fill a linear gradient. Um, I have two different colors here that I'm gonna use. These are also two of the colors we're gonna use in the front end as well in HTML and CSS. So for the first color stop, we'll choose this uh, color, which is E81CFF. Uh, the next one, we want to make sure the opacity is all the way up, and also we'll choose uh, this color code, which is uh, 40C9FF. Okay. Now, to make this work, put this right back up to where it was. All we do is add an effect of layer blur. All right. Now we could take this and we could adjust the layer blur, layer blur rather as necessary. So I, if we want to take this and move it down slightly, there you go. Now I think there's it's a little bit too high contrast, so we could adjust the opacity maybe to like 60%. Ooh, not that, not 0 0.6, <laughs> 60 or so. And there we go, we have a real nice subtle linear based sort of gradient. Now we could also select this and we can change the direction. I kind of like this, continue a 45 degree angle. We can move it all around however we wish, and we can also replicate this, uh, this angle in CSS as well. All right, so of course, you don't wanna overuse this type of effect with anything, but if used correctly, it could be a nice sort of colorful play in a UI, like a card. Okay, so now let's go ahead and switch to the front end developer situation. So I'm here in Visual Studio Code. I have a just a blank index.html. I'm gonna hit exclamation point enter, and it just gives us a quick boilerplate. We're gonna type in link, enter, and then we're gonna link a style sheet that doesn't yet exist in the folder of CSS, main.css. All right, now we'll also create that folder, CSS, and then create that file, main.css. We don't need to use SAS for this because this is not a crazy project. Okay. Um, now what we'll do is we're just going to have uh, a div with a class of box. So box enter. And inside of here, we'll just have some quick text. Uh, whoa, gradients. And then also a paragraph of like lorem 15. There we go. So we'll save that. And then now we're gonna go ahead and open with live server. There you are. Let's uh, get that out of the way. We might as well just dock this over here to the right so we can see what's happening and get this positioned right there. There we go. All right, so now what we'll do is switch to our main CSS file 
and I'm going to go ahead and just paste in a quick rule set, a body. All right, so all I'm doing here is just setting the margin to zero. Uh, we have place content center, display grid. These two work together when you have like a single element. Right here, we're just using the body element as the, 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 the display grid. Typically, you would never want to do this, uh, but for this example, it's fine. Uh, and that just allows us to take this box element and center it horizontally, horizontally and vertically. All right, now, just as well, height, 100 viewport height, this will make this work, otherwise it won't uh, center it vertically correctly. And then font family, do you need to, I already have that installed. Of course, you'd wanna use Google Fonts and import that in your index.html if this were a real project. Also, uh, I'm gonna put margin zero on the H1 just to get rid of a little bit of the white space that's usually at the top. And now here's the effect. So we have our box and we wanna give this the actual background color. Uh, in order for this to work, we have, a give it, have to give it a background color of white. Before I do that, I'm gonna um, show you why we would do that. So this effect relies on using the before selector here. So before, let me uh, get a little bit larger there, make sure you can all see. Uh, so what we do is when we use the before element, we make it a position absolute, all right? So position absolute. This is a common pattern uh, with this sort of thing when you're trying to add certain like graphic accents using before or after uh, in CSS. Uh, whenever you have position absolute on one of these uh, before pseudo elements, we simply put position relative on the parent right here. Uh, otherwise, the effect won't work and you won't even see the shadow. All right, after that, we're gonna put the Z index of negative one because we want it to go behind the element. And then we also wanna put content empty. And again, this and this and this are pretty much almost, you'll always see these three elements um, added uh, in conjunction with each other when you're trying to use these pseudo elements to add certain graphic accents. So top zero, left zero. Also bottom zero, we have to add these otherwise you won't end up seeing it. And then now it comes for the actual text portion. All right, so, or not text portion, but the color, the gradient. So we're gonna do background and linear gradient function. So the first parameter, we specify the angle of the gradient. So negative 45 DEG for degrees. And then we just put our color stops in here. And it's uh, basically two values. First, you have your color. And then second, you have a percentage value denoting at what point it starts. Uh, so here's how this works. So we're gonna put E81CFF, which is a color code. And then we're gonna make that start at 0% in the linear gradient. Next, we're gonna have the other one, which is a blue color. I'm gonna get that on my reference monitor. That's gonna be 40C9FF, and that'll end at 100%. So we're just having two different color stops, um, just like that. Um, so now in order for us to see this, the reason we don't see it is because it's completely behind and it's the same exact size as the parent. So we can push it down a little bit. And before we do that, let's actually do a uh, filter blur 20 pixels. All right, I thought I would see it, but clearly I don't. <laughs> let's do this, uh, transform, translate 3D zero pixels. Now this is simply gonna move it down 20 pixels. All right. And it's still not working. I'm looking here at my uh, code to make sure everything is set up correctly. Uh, oh, that's because I put a left there. That's supposed to be right. Yeah, let's get rid of this. Just to show you, um, you don't have to move it with transform, but it will just add it all around like a glow instead of a shadow. So when we add this back, uh, this pushes it down on the y-axis 20 pixels. All right, so hopefully that makes a little bit more sense now. Okay, so now um, we can go ahead and we can also put in border radius, inherit, all right, so if there's any border radius on the top, which there's not right now, which we're gonna add, uh, it'll show up. So uh, it'll hear it from that. So what we could do is let's add um, border radius of like 0.5 M units. And then let's also add padding three M units. All right, and let's just make this a width of like 
250 pixels. And there we go. Look at that. That is so snazzy. Now, if I go back to our the actual gradient generator uh, and we look at the code, there's another code uh, for the after selector. So if I um, go back, it's not gonna actually change anything, but I wanted to show you the description. I, it gives you this as well to add after. So we have a before selector and an after selector. The after selector, when you add this, it says it prevents issues when the parent creates a stacking context, for example, using transform property. So if you've ever tried to animate like a transform property or something like that, sometimes it'll screw up uh, the, the actual uh, design. So this right here, this content empty, Z index, negative one, position absolute, all this stuff uh, will fix that issue that occurs here. And that is it essentially. So um, I think it's useful to be know how to first design it in Figma, which I showed you, and then also how this all works uh, with an explanation. Of course, if you ever wanted to create this, you could just simply go to that you know, useful website, uh, just kind of grab, grab both of these properties and then just input your own colors or use one of their many predefined colors down here uh, for your project. Awesome, awesome stuff.